pro streamer just muted again hey everybody welcome to thursday fun times under the ground times here with the dungeon of the mad mage crew and before we get going and before we delve deeper into the depths and try to break our own personal best record of four rooms yes we did count the hallway as a room last time bringing our wonderful uh, record to be beaten four per episode can we do it tonight i doubt but we will try a quick recap of what occurred last week um we had several things happen as we were aforementioned running through the dungeon of the mad mage and we met the last of lyrics there was a parlay the parlay was successful. A stone key was exchanged for some information. The information led the party to a temple. Uh, this temple home, not real sure what it was, seemed to be the prior residence of a drow family, parents and two children. And this four person drow family seemed to be an aberration as far as drow societal concerns are measured. They worshipped a good god, a good aligned god, and as the majority of society in the above world would shun a devil or demon worshipper, so too it appeared that the drow society shunned these good worshippers. In addition to all of that, and with the discovery of the drow family, they delved deeper, four whole rooms, into this home residence temple. They found that in one particular secret area that was opened with a small dial along the armrest of one of two thrones, the dial was turned by the resident rogue Garnet and a door opened. And as the resident witch flew up on her broom to peek in with the resident white albino raven familiar, they saw nothing but mushrooms beyond. Normally, mushrooms are freaky. It's especially freaky when you were given a warning by the vampire upon whom you've parlayed before, the lass of lyrics, who said that she was down there looking for one person, one target of her vengeance, and that person would be identified by wearing, instead of a flower pinned to their lapel, a yellow mushroom. Not whether this was coincidence or simply subterranean growth, the party didn't stick around long enough to find out. They closed the door and discussed whether or not to go deeper into the temple residence of this drow family. As Karis was looking around and identifying certain abnorm abnormalities upon the mosaic that lined this great room that they were in, noting that the family, in fact, were labeled as blasphemers and that the iconography of the good goddess upon whom they worshipped had been blasphemed and desecrated. Just at that moment, the large Asimar barbarian Kyogen grabbed his friend, carried her from the room because beneath the secret door upon which the dial was in the arm of the throne, sprouts and stalks of mushrooms had begun to creep under the door. They had sprouted, they had grown stalks and toadstools, and if the party had stuck around, the small discolored circular patches on top of the toadstools would have opened and eyes would have begun to look around into the room. But they did not stick around to see that wonderful sight. They instead went into an additional room, the hallway that we counted as one of their four. And when they got in there, it was a transfer, an investigation, and they opened the last room that they would get into. It seemed to be a servant's quarters, perhaps a kitchen. And as they were investigating, they found, or Garnet found really, as she was advancing the vanguard in a bre uh, breakneck pace to get them deeper into the dungeon of the Mad Mage. But there, in a door facing the one upon which she had jimmied and entered, there was very villainous a piece of parchment and a dagger driven through it to nail it home, an advertisement of promised pain, as it simply said, Stand down, Gorbrin, last chance. 
And as Gorbrin approached this message or missive to pull it down, the door upon which it was nailed opened, and a splendid goblin wearing very fine robes, a cunning haircut, swept back the follicles, few though they may be, perfectly paced, placed upon his pate. And as he questioned the group to see whether or not they had nailed and desecrated his door, hearing a good answer, he invited them all through the portal to points unknown, but the promise of mushroom soup. And as named by Kika last time, Augustus Rhine, your host is awaiting you through the darkened portal. And that, my friends, is where we will begin this episode of Dungeon of the Mad Mage. What will you do? I don't like mushrooms. I'm pretty sure all the mushrooms here are vampires or something. Yeah, let's... I mean, I could go for some food. It's, um... No. We've been well, down here for a while. The goblin's dead now. I I mean, they... Rest in peace, goblin friend. Now we need to press on. Well, well his, his door is right there. It's still open. He's dead now. Rest in peace, goblin friend. <clears throat> we need to move on. We... Do you know this goblin? Yes. No one will miss him. Let's go. Um, well, but they said they knew where the portals were, and we got to find the portals. Um, can I can I continue looking for tracks of where her buddy, our 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 friends, the the cult went? Absolutely, and uh, because your prior role had been so impressive uh, two rooms back, I had mentioned that as far as the narrative's concerned, as long as you're able to visually inspect the ground, you can see the passage of these tracks. You can't count number, uh, even because they seem to be very planned and professional in their placement. But um, because of your own professionalism, Garnet, you're able to see the passage of these. Now, in this room, there appears to be a little bit more traffic than in the rooms in the hallway that you had been in before. But as you look around, you can see that Gorbrin crossed over into towards the door, heading towards that missive or that parchment that had been nailed on there. And you can still make out that it looks like the tracks went through the very door that had been marked with the nailing. Oh, and is that the, is that the door that, that our friend Augustus went through? It is correct. Yes. Yep. He went through the very same portal. Um, well, they went that way. So I think we should go that way anyway. Well, we're trying to get ahead of them, so. Do you know where they went? That way. Yeah, that way. So let's get ahead of them. So through the door. Mm. It'll be fine. He seems amiable. Look, if it's, we can just not eat his soup. It's fine. He's not what I'm worried about. Is he, the vampire mushrooms? Just Are you worried about those? Just yeah. I mean, everything's pretty terrible is... down here, honestly. Dearna, is there something that we need to be concerned about? Death, dismemberment, fire, acid. Maybe a more specific one. You know, like with this particular situation, as opposed to on the whole, like Arnett said, everything. Um, here. In this situation, poison spores, poison spores, mind controlling spores, spores that put you to sleep, uh, getting charmed. <laughs> she starts, she just keeps listing things off. Dear, dear, no, that's not what we're asking. We're asking you why should we be concerned about I mean this goblin? Because Do you know he's this weird goblin who's taking us to weird, creepy, moving mushrooms? I I mean I think that's fair, and I think we should be on our guard. But also, 
Um, I think we should, the law, the less, like the, if we go this way, we can spend less time down here with all the terrible stuff. Mm. If we finish our job. I don't know. Just the vampire said that one of the portals would bring us ahead of them, which I figured would be one that they didn't go through. So I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe the goblin knows where we're supposed to go. So go ahead, Mr. Paladin, do your taking point thing that you do just in case something tries to bite us so it'll bite you instead because you're all covered in metal and stuff. Uh, um, what if it comes up from behind us? Then you'll be bitten. No. Well, don't say that. That's mean. You know what? Let's just <sighs> let's just go, okay? And Garnet's gonna go through the portal. Yeah, why would you say such a thing to me? Paladin, that is rude. You are mean. <laughs> you you have hurt my feelings. He's just gonna like kind of just like move his tongue around his mouth in this like exasperated motion, just like and just sigh. And he's gonna grab the missive and just follow after Garnet, um, when he looks at it, does it look, so, I want to know if this looks like his sister's handwriting. It's been decades, but, like, he's searching right. to see, like, like is, this, is this a trick or is this really her? Okay, um, let's do a history or a perception check. You'll be getting different elements of information depending upon which one you pick. Okay, well, my history is one. My perception is two. Um, I think thematically history makes more sense. So I'll do use one of my advantages on it. Natural use 20. It, but that's okay. And with that nat 20, you mm -hmm. are fairly certain this is your sister's handwriting. He just kind of stares at it as they walk, just pouring over each word. As you pass by Kyogen heading into the portal, he looks at you and you are a very mean paladin, shiny human. I... <sighs> going to turn around to Dierna. I apologize for being rude. I was attempting a joke, but in our present circumstances, it was not conducive to the environment that we are in right now, so I apologize. Pardon? Je ne parle pas common. Kyogen pats his head. That's much better. And I, I, I... Um, also, did, uh, did he uh, just pat me on the head? Yes, Gorm he did. You'll get used to it. DNA <sighs> pats him on the head as well. Don't, it's just it's for luck. You pat the palate on the head for luck. Everybody pat the palate on I the head. No, dying. It's like I am not in the mood for head pats. Thank I you. definitely pat them on the head. Just like a gentle. As I, as I walk away with Dierna, I, I say to her, his hair is quite soft. Yes, he must condition. Uh, with the last of the head pats. Um, and that's where I'm like, Oathbreaker. Psh, right. The oath. I'm going to turn Oathbreaker and just kill everybody. Um, Hemelig, the albino raven, flies over and lands on your metal clad shoulder right where the brace meets the buckle on the uh, one joint does not pat you on the head but the raven would turn and look at you and somehow has crafted the one lens that was taken from 
the goggles given to you by the Lass of Lyrics, into an oversized monocle that goes over just one of the raven's eyes. You have no idea how a creature without opposable thumbs was able to do this, but do it it did, and it's in some type of almost like a leather or a, a thongy strap that goes around and keeps, so you have one great big raven eye looking at you, and the raven, in a moment of sympathy, puts the feathered head against yours, and there is an equal amount of softness between conditioned hair and feathered pate. He won't say anything, but he'll reach over a finger slowly and just scratch the raven um, right where um, fe just the feathers meet beak, right in that cro crook, and just like scratch him. And in Sylvan, I tell Hemelig to bite him. Uh, Hemelig, the, the mouth cracks <sighs> open and the bite you, it does, but with very little pressure and <laughs> almost like a child talking around a lollipop or a piece of candy, you hear Hemelig say, shiny human. And then it takes off and flies back over onto Kika's shoulder. With one great big eye monocle. Jenny takes out like the rest of the goggles and see if the other lens is kind of intact. The other lens is hopelessly shattered. It's in fragments. You know, you could probably put it back together, but uh, being a, 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 um, a worldly person of the arcane arts, you would know that probably any enchantment that was housed within it, it died with its shattering. But. The one that Hemelig is wearing with your eyes, Deirna Hall, you can tell that there is a glow coming from it, and Hemelig is not having a whole lot of problems seeing down here anymore. I gently pet Hemelig. That's good. You're a good familiar. I know. Well, I mean, I'd... I'm attempting positive reinforcement. I appreciate it. I need it. <laughs> so, yeah. after, after the Raven interlude, what would like, you all like as, to do? As just everyone leaves, and it just he's going to watch the exchange and just be like, I should get a pet. And just walk up. So let's cut to Garnet, because Garnet, you slipped through. You, you, you were, you, you, you've got a record to break. Um, as you slip into this area, you realize that the circular nature of the room that you had been in before, the um, the would look like a servant's quarter or a kitchen. You now understand why it looked the way it did, or why it, architecturally it was laid out that way. You are in what looks like the bottom of a tower. And you see a curled staircase leading up. And if you were to guess, this circular spiral staircase is hugging the interior wall of the room that you had just left. Mm. All right. Um, I guess I will continue to go up the stairs if that's where the footprints are. Yeah, at this point, you can see there's a lot more wear and tear here as far as the ability to track. It looks as if, once again, um, it, it, why don't you roll me a, uh, a survival check or a perception check, and I'll give you a little bit more information about what you can find them. You can see them, but they're becoming very difficult to spot. You see one like every couple of cheeses. I see it. You see every, at the subatomic level, Garnet, this is what you see. Um, so once again, you are locked into this particular track. Um, and you would guess that if this is a, a, a popular or a, a common route by the goblin, the robes that he is wearing would act very much like a broom as they were just long enough to kind of touch the floor as he walked. 
Luckily, you're able to kind of catch the extreme edges of the steps as they ascend, and you see a little bit of a disturbance here or there, a scuff along the wall. Um, no one else, perhaps in the realms, could pick out this trail at this point. You are dialed into it. You no longer have to make any checks to find it. 226 rolls mean you've got it. So you see where it's going, and it's going up. All right, I will continue to go up, I guess. Okay. I mean, so I at, guess I guess this time I will wait for the rest of everybody to get through. Okay. But then I will go up. Okay, so are you going to wait for like the first person to pop through and then Garnet, you're going to kind of skip off into the shadows? Yeah. Roll me a stealth then, unless you want to just walk up. I uh, know, I'll, I'll stealth. I just got expertise, so... Yeah, here come the rolls. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Rogues! Um, <laughs> um, I love them. Uh, so with a 27, I believe that, Gorbrin, you were the first, the next person to come through in line as you kind of shrugged and left the area and the exchange between um, Raven and uh, uh, Witch. And as you turn and walk in, just as soon as you pass through the portal, Garnet, you're able to disappear and head up to the point where Gorbin, when you walk in, you don't see Garnet at all. Despite the fact that she waited for you to arrive, you never saw her depart. Who else is going in and in what order? I'll go in next. Lady Red? I'll go after. Yes, I mean the back. Okay. You begin to ascend the staircase and as soon as you go 30, 40 steps, you curl around and Garnet with your earlier check, it sticks both with the trail and with your ability to kind of ascertain the distance that you have gone. You figure you've curled around that room that you had just been in. And as you creep up, you reach what would have been the ceiling of that room or the floor of the next. And as you come up, there is a pretty impressive ornate wooden door slightly ajar uh i will peek in and then if it looks like if it's just like the soup goblin or whatever like if there's anything dangerous i won't go in but if it's yeah if it's just the soup goblin i'll go inside um when you peek in you see a hallway a, a narrow hallway maybe a a, a a a humanoid and a half across and um but you do see about halfway down a door on the right hand side another door further down on the right hand side but there's light coming from the first door on the right and you smell a pleasant smell and you also see the glow of fire um okay i will uh uh once again like wait until somebody else comes to the top of the stairs and then go just to like make sure i'm not leaving them too far behind okay i'll i'll stealthily approach up behind her roll stealth for me can you see me even yeah <laughs> you can't see her. I... <laughs> okay you hear him coming you hear this ass like boom boom oh yeah boom. if i hear That's... him and it's fine then i'm like yeah i'll, I'll just i'll like they're fine Right, right. So, no, you would see, whether it be shadows or, I, I joke, Kyoga wouldn't be stomping around through here, but um, for the trained senses and the fact that you're stealthing at a 27 means you're making no sound, which means any sound is an alert for a rogue with that type of level. Um, so, Garnet, you would see that both uh, Gorbrin, Kyogen, and presumably the rest are curling around the steps in your wake. Yeah, I think she's just like having fun being super quiet and stealthy now that she is free of of her boss in a tin can. So she's just going to continue to like sneak up on the soup goblin. Okay. Um, as you creep through the doorway, uh, you begin to smell the, the, the spices of cooking of um, what you catch elements of wax candle and lavender things that you would mark as being either incense or or uh, maybe the higher end home or residency illumination that you would see in Waterdeep above where the candles have baked in um, 
uh, elements of flowers and lavender and, and spices to make a, a pleasant scent. And as you creep into that and peek into that first room that's glowing with that fire, you see that uh, your host is busy with a carrying a large pot over to a warming kind of plate uh, to place it down on a very fine, if somewhat worn, wooden plank table. It's like a big picnic table, um, only made of hardwood. And he kind of is putting down a, a large pot or kettle of soup. Are those mushrooms poisonous? Let's see how bad you scare him. You <laughs> scare him very badly as, oh, oh! He slowly puts the soup down and some of it sloshes onto the ground and he looks at one of his rugs in dismay as this kind of greenish white, off-white liquid hits. <laughs> and he looks down. Oh. Poisonous? It's not poisonous at all. It's are they, al are, are they move like, were they the weird vi vampire mushrooms from downstairs or are they like normal mushrooms? You didn't go in that room, did you? Well, we opened the door and then we closed it because you didn't were... go in. No. Oh, good. That's terrible. No, no, they're just regular mushrooms. What's what? But but there are vampire mushrooms in that room, and it was a good thing we didn't go in it. If that's what you call them, I'll go along with it. I I don't know. There was a vamp. We met we met a vampire, and she said there was another vampire who wore a mushroom and. Oh, so I just think all mushrooms are vampires down here now. Well, I'm not going to say it's a, a, a bad philosophy. Most mushrooms do have a certain... The deeper you go. But these are fine. Okay. They stain. Um, can I insight check? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> Tell me all of his secrets. He seems legit, and he seems like he's <laughs> veiling being pissed that you scared him and stained his floor. He, you can, it, almost like a poker player with a tell, you see his eyes continually kind of glancing down at the stain on his very fine carpet. Can Dierne just, like, bust in now? Yeah, you guys can all make it up here by this time. She just, like, flies in on her broomstick with, like, Hemelig just flying off and just, like, going all over the place that ravens the mushrooms aren't here. vampires oh good you spilled something on your floor she says and prestidigitates the stain well thank you and then she starts trying to look for candles to steal oh there are plenty this place looks like a, a prince video i mean there are candles all along the exterior like you know different there's wax that's dripping down but it seems like the wax and the drippings of the wax have even been placed in such a way as to augment the entire ambiance of the room as you know uh, different colored candles kind of blend and bleed with the everything seems to have a place here it seems extremely organized for a room run by a goblin under mountain but yeah you can definitely yeah. grab a couple how many uh roll me a d6 uh, one uh you can get a big one i'll, I'll say you can get one of the ones with like the rose petal inlay in it it's nice. of course lit so you can do what you will with it i um, just snuff it out just shove it in my bag uh, so the the goblin uh, with his staff looks around. Uh, have a seat, everyone. Sit. Mushroom. I have bread. Baking bread. He goes over, and you see him open a drawer in a desk and pull out like a warm, almost you can see the steam coming off the bread that he pulls out of a desk drawer. Uh, bread. I have wine. Wine. And he goes over, and you see him pull out of a scroll tube a bottle of wine that should not have fit in the scroll tube and he puts it down and uh, red uh, white uh, water and he looks at everyone Corbett at this point is going through the door is like I'll take a whiskey if you have it oh then, but... um, put a pin in that one knight 
Uh, everyone else? I would love some red wine. And do tell me, what is a goblin like you doing in a place like this? You seem to be much better off than anyone else you've seen under here. Especially the last two we saw. Mm -hmm. This is my home. I've, I've made myself a kingdom down here. Why? We have. It's very cozy. Wonder Mountain has its certain perks. One being, I'm not likely to be killed down here if I, as I would if I walked along the streets of Waterdeep. My kind are not tolerated. And quite frankly, if you've read Volo's missive on stereotypes, you would know that uh, they don't think of... They, th they lump us all together as people that take skulls and sell them or you know, fighters, or... I'm a different type of goblin. I know what you mean. Well, while he's tied up chatting with them, Kyogen's really mystified by this bread-baking drawer. And he's gonna go over there and kind of peer into it and see what he sees. Roll me perception check. You get over there, and the 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 drawer of the desk is open a crack and it's not so much that you see anything other than light and not the light of a cooking fire or the orange glow of dying embers or anything else that would be used to potentially bake bread you see sunlight I uh call over Karas over to me um, yes, what do you need? The bread isn't from here. There's sunlight the peak. coming out of the drawer that he pulled the bread out of. May I do an arcana check to see um, why there is a sun in the drawer? Are you trying to open said drawer or are you just trying to just glean information from the exterior of the drawer i'm going to open it i want to i want to take a little peek are you trying to do this subtly or you just don't care whether or not the goblin sees you yeah he seems chill okay so uh you are able to go ahead and open the drawer and when you pull it open you feel and kind of smell the residual baking bread and the warmth that comes out of the drawer uh, but you also feel the heat of the sun's rays upon your face as you kind of look in and where the back or the bottom or the sides of the drawer should be. You see a table and you see several loaves of cooling bread on the table. You also hear the sounds of water deep coming from just through an open window. Oh, so I know that it's specifically water deep based on the sound in the window, huh? Yeah, you can hear harbor and stuff like that. I mean, it could be Neverwinter, it could be Baldur's Gate, but I gave you a freebie. You're pretty I, sure. I lean, I lean back into her. It got weirder. Kyogen, my dear, it is only going to keep getting weirder, so I suggest you raise your tolerance for that. And I gently, like, slide it close. Uh, this is a portal. You have yeah. some very nice resources here, my friend. Thank you. Just as you're closing it, Karis, you see a um, older, um, heavier, stocky uh, gnome come over, and you see him with a baker's apron on, and he begins to look at the table, doesn't seem to notice you, but goes... I said we need eight! And the door, the drawer closes. Set. Bread and soup, red wine, white wine, whiskey. And you go, he goes over, and in a long boot that is way too big for him, he reaches down and kind of rummages through it, and you see him pull up a 
bottle of what looks like whiskey with a third of the liquid in it. <laughs> whiskey! I want to look in that boot. You want to? Yeah. Like... Okay. Just go over there like a scruffy little goblin and I'll just shove my face in the boot to take a look. Roll me a perception check whenever you go face first in the boot. Okay. Come on. 22. As soon as your face kind of encompasses the entirety of what would be this kind of knee-high boot, when you stick your face in, Hemelig pushes beak and monocle, so he's peeking in beside you kind of cheek to cheek as you're looking through. And um, as you're looking through into the boot, the boot is gone. The sides, the back, the heel, the, the sole, and you smell the salt air. You can almost feel the motion as what you're looking at is rising and falling in relation to your position and perspective. And there in an array housed in these baskets of wicker, you see various bottles of rum and whiskey and darker liquids. And just at that moment, as you're looking through and Hemelig's beak is looking through, um, you see a gentleman stumble through a portal and a door with a, a circular window in it and it opens and kind of slams and rocks a bit uh, mm, see what we have left here and he reaches over and he picks something up and mm, takes a drink oh wonderful i got some more mounties he walks back out and after he leaves i just reach and just like try to grab anything that i can <laughs> Are you looking for anything in particular, like something that sticks out with a 22? Just anything. I like stuff. Okay, you see a bottle of something that appears to be brighter than everything else in its whatever's distilled inside of it. Um, and it bears a, a, a gold brand on the outside that has wax drippings and it still seems to be relatively full. It's in the back on the top and appears untouched as it's covered in just a little bit of like moisture and brine where everything else seems to have been wiped clean or used frequently. Can That's I reach it? That's the good shit. That's the mm -hmm. good shit. Yeah, I'm yeah you can. It. You could, as you reach down, Hemelig, not understanding what you're doing, is going further in. And so the beak and everything like, is going. No, 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 no. Stay back. Stay back. He creeps back a bit. You grab the bottle and you're able to retreat. Okay. Are you trying to keep this to yourself, Dierna? Or are you. Are I don't you think I care if anyone sees me, but I'm just. I take it out and it immediately goes into my bag, but I'm not like making a huge effort to be sneaky about it. Okay, because I was going to say, uh, your host is not paying attention to you. So unless it's you're just kind of taking it out and drinking from it, then that would be a noticeable point. But if you're just taking it out and stowing it immediately, yeah, doesn't pay any bit of attention to you. I, I'd like to think that Gore... Gor uh, Gorbin just watched them like both put their heads in this boot and just struggle around and then pull out this this very fine bottle of something. Yeah. Does he <laughs> recognize the brand at all? Does he know like what it might be? Uh, you would have to investigate more. Uh, from this distance, just bottle and color doesn't do much. Uh, there is that gold seal that's on it, but you don't get enough of it before it's stowed and put away. Can I, like, try just to see if go, I can put the boot just on over my fly. boot and pretend I was always wearing the boot? You want to take the boot? You're taking the whole boot? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the problem with it is, is there's no bottom to it. So as soon oh, as you no. put it on, you sink up to like your thigh. And yeah. presumably your leg is in a sailing ship somewhere in... Somewhere. Um, the boot itself doesn't move when you try to walk with it either. It seems affixed to this position on the floor. Um, I rumble and sh pull myself you... out. <laughs> What are you doing? It's I'm. I'm I was sorry trying it my, on. I'm sorry for my uh, compatriots. They are inquisitive. By Garnet's eating soup. 
It's oh. if you like mushrooms, it's very good. It seems to be prepared with an artist's hand. And um, he, as soon as he sees you eat garnet, he kind of sighs in relief and immediately goes up and pulls uh, or takes a position on the bench beside you. He does not see, uh, uh, take a, a seat at the head of the table. He sits beside you and kind of looks over and he's not eating um, immediately. He does get a bowl, but he looks at you kind of, huh? Huh? It's, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Hey, I have some questions. Does it need Is anything? It... The answers to my questions. I will try a bowl, sir, and I will let you know how how it is. I Maybe told not. him how it was. I would just be able to appreciate it more if he answered my questions. Do you have any ritual spells? Yes. <sighs> Teach them to me, please. What? Yeah. Well, I hold on a second. And he seems enamored more with Garnet than everybody else because she was the first to take the table and eat the soup. And what are your what are your questions? Well focused solely on Garnet at this point. There were some people who came through, right? In in black cloaks. I must have missed them. But your sister, Our... and he points towards Gorbrin, your sister? nailed on my door downstairs they she wasn't wearing black cloaks though she's Wait, here i don't i didn't see them see them i caught the end of it oh okay um yes they were here um, they were here and they went through where did they go through presumably through the hall and up to the portals i haven't oh. seen them since I don't like to go up there. Why not? There's a fire elemental. Oh. Um, second question. Have you one. heard anything about a carnival? A carnival? You mean like... Like jugglers here. Jugglers and... She's gonna show him the uh, the flyer she found. Have you heard anything about this? Hmm. Huh. No, I don't believe so. No, uh. not in this part, anyway. Okay. Well, if you do, don't go into the oubliette. Promise. You'll die in there. Seriously. Then I definitely won't go in. Okay. How, um, how did you know it was my sister? And how how do you I, know my name? I, I told him, remember? Yeah. Yes, she said it and your oh. name's written on the paper. You're Gobrin. Hello. Hello. Um, Jirna just like takes a bowl of soup and tries to eat it as fast as possible so she can get his attention. Yeah, 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 <laughs> slow, save her. It's got elements and flavor across the tongue. Across the Jack, tongue. I can, can detect any and all flavors, no matter how quickly we eat. She says. Then... But it's still not <laughs> nice. It's sort of impolite. Okay. I Maybe think it was very nice. It was good soup. Thank you. Well, good. I'm glad. I seldom get compliments or critiques or suggestions, so I don't know if I'm doing well or not. You're doing perfectly well for soup. He turns, his, he turns his attention back to Garnet. Any more questions? Um. Kyogen leans into Garnet. He makes magic doors. Did he make the portals? Oh, apparently you make magic doors. Did you, Are these your portals? The ones upstairs? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh -huh. Garnet, ask him if we can take one of the portals to get ahead of the other group. Do you know where the portals go? Well, uh, sort of. They all go down. Okay. You they all come back here. Okay, I, that's good. I, I didn't see which one they went in. Yeah, yeah, the, that's that's fine. I can figure that out, but I just want to know, like, 
like do which you, one are goes there, furthest yeah like which one goes further down are there is there one that is like oh don't go in here there's a big monster who lives in this place like you know stuff like that no 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 nothing like that um i tried to have all of the portals go somewhere that was in the widest range through this vast system of caverns. So before I had to go out and get my food, but then I, <laughs> I figured out this. So um, I don't use them much anymore, but um, so they, they usually drop you off in some place unpopulated. Ah. Oh. But deep. Where, Very what, deep. do you use one for a particular kind of food or do you just kind of like use it to uh, fast travel around the underman. Yes, yes. I have waypoints that I have set and then I am able to fast travel whenever I need to. No. Um <laughs> yeah, he's I have uh one for fresh water, one for well, mushrooms, and then I had uh another one that was um catch of the day if you know what I mean. Ah. Uh, okay. Biters. Yes. Do you, can you describe to me the different portals and which one goes where and which one's the furthest down? Well, they shift. Um, anytime someone goes into one, they move. Uh, and he uh, reaches into his pocket and you see him pull out three cards. It looks like a regular deck of cards, but he only has three. And as he takes them out, he places them down and you see the denominations of what would be in the realms, the one, two, and three card. He takes them and then flips them over so you, all you see are the backs, shuffles them around and flips them up, and they're out of order, two, three, one. Flips them over, shuffles them around, flips them up, three, one, two, and does it over. Every time someone goes in, they all stay in their frames. The, the portals are too close, though, and they move. Oh. You take the good, you take the bad. But they all come back here. Yes. Okay. That's good to know. So... <clears throat> thank you for teaching us the facts of life. I'm, I thank you for catching the joke. <laughs> how, how did they get by you? To the portals. I don't know. Maybe they were invisible. Do I think he's hiding something when he says you, that? You can insight check. I will. Well, when we came into your room, you practically crapped yourself, so you're not very observant. Or maybe Indeed. we are extremely good at stealth. <laughs> but for one, she's very sneaky, and he points at Garnet. Um, for two um i i knew as soon as you came into the room downstairs but you didn't know when they came in i did not maybe they have some sort of protection against any sort of divination magics see i would have thought the same thing and that is an excellent observation but normally that doesn't work real well in here hmm. meaning under mountain I mean, these people are sneakier than me, honestly. I'm kind of jealous. Um, You're very sneaky. I know, right? But isn't the black cloak guy screwing with magic? That could what? be causing problems. I think oh, he's what? involved. What do you mean? And he, for the first time, turns his attention from Garnet and focuses on Kyogen. What do you mean screwing with magic? No, oh, it's no. That's it. Don't worry about it. No, he said screwing with magic. He was very oh, adamant, oh. and it was a purposeful I will, statement. I will give you more information if you teach me some rituals. Mm, hold that one moment. Like a fair trade. You yeah. said screwing with magic. What did you mean by screwing with magic? I use a lot of magic, and things have not have been working right. The well, portals. D that's a the problem. Ernest said told told me beforehand something about this black coat cloak guy and he was um that is messing, messing with the weave 
That is but all the she, information she, he has. I yeah, have more information. She can tell you a lot more than I can. And I would be willing to share this information in I, trade. I, dear Anna, he invited us into his home and gave us a meal. I don't think it's polite to ask for more than that. I'm not asking, I'm offering. Speaking now you want to be a good paladin. I'm so confused. I, Speaking of it, I will ask everyone this question before the soup is put away. Who mm -hmm. had some of it? Yeah, I would have eventually... I just dumped um, uh, bread and wine. Bread and wine? Okay. As the soup is yeah. put away... Yeah. Like a little dunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. As the soup I will is let... put... Sorry. No, I was going to say, as the soup is put away, everyone that had some, you gain the benefits of a long rest. I will let him know that I enjoyed the basil and the uh, the uh, uh, the pepper is in the rough the right amount. Um, I would think about considering frying the mushrooms beforehand and frying them with a bit of tu of of turmeric. It might be a nice little kick to it. What are you, no knight? Like and then he turns. I, uh, <laughs> he looks a little bit irritated by the like, extent of things that you could do to make it better, but there are mental like notes you, being taken. He is the water deep knight of soups. I, I, Don't worry about it. He eats real fancy people food now. I, <sighs> so, spells for I, information, fair trade, let's go. Very well, what do you know about the weave being messed with? My portals never did this before, now they switch around. Well, uh, what spell would you teach me in exchange for this information? Hmm. Do you know illusory script? I... She flips through her book. I do not seem to have that in this book at this moment. Well... And he reaches back and something guides a scroll into his hand. Illusory script. You may use it once or you may teach yourself and it is a ritual. A very quick one, an easy one. Doesn't have a lot to do. But um, it will enable you to write secret messages. Do you have I mean, anything you that, that I like it's, it, You're making fun of me, but I have a lot of use for being able to write secret messages. I do too. Oh. This whole place is filled with secret messages. I look around with my 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 Eldritch sight. It looks like a huge post-it note. Gone is the veil of everything being organized, and you actually see written on like where you guys have picked up plates and everything. It says place plate here in some type of kind of glowing blue writing on the the table. Place <laughs> spoon here, place fork here, place napkin here. See, I get to kick out of it as well. Hmm. 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 I suppose this is sufficient for now. She takes the scroll and puts it in her book. The so weave. Hallis yes, Hallister is working, doing experiments directly on the weave and wishes to harness its full power, but that'll lead to this destruction of the weave and magic. And I am here to stop that because as you can imagine, that's really bad. And I'm with her. Yes, he's my, he's my, my, uh, my servant. I point over to Karis, and she's with me. So you're not all together? You're with each... Did you run into each other down here? No, they hired me, and I said, yeah, I'm going there anyway. We're here under the the uh, of, uh, authority of La Lady Sil Sil uh, Silverhand. She has no authority down here. Um, but, my mission's more important anyway. Uh, he, he is... No. Everybody that was watching uh, the goblin when Darna Hall was explaining what was going on with the weave, roll me an insight check, please. Me too. <laughs> I 
fucking rogues, man. Um, Karis and uh, uh, Garnet, as this is going on, you would see that your goblin host, upon the mention of the weave and Halister Black Cloak and being sent to fix it, there was a ghost of recognition across his eyes as if he had heard the story before. So to the portals then, get in front of those no good people and fix my weave. <laughs> mm. It's everyone's weave. Well, potato, potato. Hey, I have one more question. Sure. Have you seen any other people like me? Like you, you mean? Like Red, or like from the Feywild, or like, you know. Aladrin. No. Okay. You mean recently, uh, or in a book, or? No, 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 like recently, like, hmm. you know. No, I, I just have... I just want to know if there's any kind of like Fey bullshit down here. Because of your, because of your earlier roles, Karis and Garnet, when you say ty any type of Fable shit, he shakes his head no, but again, there's a ghost of something across his face, like he has heard a story like this before. There's a recognition. He's, you're convinced with your insight that he hasn't seen anyone like you, but the more that this is kind of being talked about, he seems to be getting a handle on something. What about it's... hags? Do you see any hags around? Uh, three. Recently? Uh, day before last. Which way did they go? Down. Okay, did you catch any names or identifying markers? We don't speak per se, but we don't get in each other's way. Um, they use my portals and they will leave me things as payment, which I think is nice. Ah, oh, would you like a skull? No. What kind of goblin do you think I am? What about a bugbear skull? I mean, I just thought Ooh. you might be able to. Yeah, I got <laughs> two. You can have one. What do you have? A bugbear, you say? Yeah, I take <laughs> out a bugbear skull and just dunk it on the table. <laughs> Uh, when, when you when you dunk it on the table right in the center of it, uh, you see with the illusory script, it says, if ever I get a bugbear skull, put it here. <laughs> no, just when you put Just the vibration spills the glass of whiskey that Gorbrin had just like, poof, it's like, it seems like It seems like you know something or like that there's something, something familiar about about this it seems like you're not telling us everything and i mean we ate your soup so you can't betray us no that, is, of that is a, a law <sighs> fine um That's... roll persuasion check or intimidation Water... can i Water deep doesn't have help? a law like that no it's, it's a fey law <laughs> i say and i'd like make my eyes glow uh... I'll Someone stand behind them. I'll stand behind them, sort of menacingly. I'm, I roll persuasion. I'm helping. Okay. Oh I yeah. Have advantage. I rolled a better persuasion. Fine. There's a, there's a, like a myth or a prophecy or something. Um. Take it, notes. I don't know it. It's. Something happens with the weave. It's not specific. It doesn't say the weave. It says something more along the lines of the ley lines that I don't know how much you know about Waterdeep, but it was built here by the elves because the ley lines converged in this particular place. The humans like to think it was built here because the harbor's very deep. Oh, Waterdeep. That is a great name. But no, it was because the elves felt that all of the ley lines of the magic of the realms converged here. It's one of the very few hubs or nexus in the entire plane. Um, it's a good place to mess up the weave, or to augment it, or to steal it. And that's why Halister built this thing, presumably. Um, but the prophecy states that 
before the fall of the weave, there will be a great battle for magic. And there will be two groups. One, hunting. One, hero. I don't know which you are. Does it matter? Not to me. What does that have to do with the Fae? I don't know. Okay. Well, I hope personally that I'm neither part, I'm, I'm part of none of this, but um, thank you for your soup and for your information. You guessed thank it, you for, I really appreciate it. Thank you for being the first person to take to my table. It's been a long time. Well, that's too bad. Well, maybe if we come this way on the way back, we'll stop in for soup again. You better. I can rummage around in my drawers and I'm sure I can figure out something. And he opens up what would be the kind of the, the letter drawer of the desk. And he reaches in and pulls out like what looks to be a rack of ribs. Look, ribs. And you hear a yell from inside. My God. And he puts back, not today, but on a good day, we can have ribs, too. That sounds great. If you're into that thing, if you're vegetarian, I've got plenty, but... Um, yes, so come back. It, and he had already given the illusory script to Dierna, but he will reach into a conventional shelf, and there's a clinking of bottles as he pulls three of them out. Uh, two of them hold a greenish liquid inside, uh, with a, a, a slight kind of effervescence to them and sets them down and he says to Deirna Hall and Garnet and Karis, do you know what these are? I don't mean yes. to be... Oh, I'm dying! I... <laughs> no, you're not! <laughs> uh, yes, they make you feel better. Um, and then he reaches in and there's a vial and he pulls the vial out and the vial has a base on it. So it looks very much like kind of like a standing thermometer and puts it down and shakes it, but you don't see anything inside. This is a good one. You know, where'd he go? Ah. Yes. It makes you invisible. Ah. I don't need it. Oh, well, this is very generous of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for stopping by. I mean... Until if you catch up to those hunters or heroes or fables are to be believed, tell them not to come through here anymore. This is not their place. Okay, and I will definitely tell them not to nail things onto other people's doors. See? Manners. I appreciate it. Can I use one of these drawers to leave my roommate a letter? Um, where do you... Do you live in a bakery, or do you live in the butcher, or do you live... Well, I just mostly need to get a piece of paper to water deep, and it'll go from there. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the uh, easiest one is this one. I use this one when I want to make a political complaint. And he goes over, and there's a huge book on the table, and he opens it up, and you look through a small crack in a roof and you see what would be the Castle Ward District and more specifically the political square of Waterdeep. I state my political opinions, crumple them on paper and throw them. Teach them. So yes, if you just pitch it, it'll be there. I mean, I don't know if anybody yeah. delivers them, but... She takes a piece of, like, a note that she already wrote down on the notebook that the vampire gave her and, like, writes her roommate's name on the top and just shoves it through the crack. As soon as it hits the air, it folds itself into a swan and you see it. <laughs> Did... Well, that item's tested. Let's go. That, do you have I could send one directly to L'Oreal Silverhand. Oh, I, that's I, his girlfriend. You could just you could just tell him. Yeah, he can deliver messages for you. Lady Red, for the last time, she is. Ooh, I'm a lady. Not, I am yeah. not. I am not in a relationship with Yet. the Open Lord. 
Not in a public one. I, fine, uh, fine. Paladin with benefits. Whatever. But listen, don't. can... What do you you what see do him you go big red, red and what like... What information do you want to get to this Lady Silverhand? Tell her she needs to do something about those idiots in Skullport. She either has to make sure that they have some type of government or, I don't know, take a flamethrower to the place. They creep Got up it. in here and they dump slop. Can't stand it. Pretty sure they're the ones that brought the mushrooms. Got it. Your complaint has been noted and will be brought to the proper authorities. I Thank you it. for engaging in the political infrastructure of Waterdeep and have a good day, citizen. That seems uh, canned, but okay. <laughs> after all the help that he's given, uh, Kyogen extends a massive forearm and hand uh, by my father and his father and the many line of ancestors before them. We will all remember the help you gave this day. We will all remember to file your political complaint for you. And I wait there patiently, waiting for him to shake my hand. He doesn't shake your hand. He touches the top of it like he's like uh, uh, pulling a bean out of a jar. You're welcome. <laughs> um, that is so, not how you shake a hand. Just I don't tell you now. I don't like to shake hands with something that could crush me, but thank you. Oh, he's very gentle. Oh, he looks it. But, uh, so just, if you want to go to use the portals, go straight up. The fire elemental is there. Um, his name is Cool, which is <laughs> ironic. Um, he will ask you a question and then you're allowed to go through. I don't know how they made it through. It's sort of... Oh, he's a friendly way. fire elemental. What's the yes. question? It's different for everyone. I Unless it's have... me, and then he just says, hey, and I say, what's going on? But I can't let anybody else through because of the enchantment. Oh. How did you okay. befriend it? Just walk up. He won't attack unless you get the question wrong. Does he speak common? Yes. Hmm. Kyogen heads out the door. What's his name? Cool. Cool, right. Sorry, I missed that. Cool the fire. I go with Kyogen. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was oh, really please. nice to, to see you. Um, uh, yes. I'll Bye. see you um, on the way back. Bye. If, please stop. If you... right. Oh, and I take the stuff that he gave us, like the potions. <laughs> okay. Oh. He just stands there with all the pushed back benches and looks around at the bit of a mess and just... Cor I'm going to push my chair in gently and then press to detate everything clean. See, I never gonna learned like that Corbin's going to stack one. the plates and stuff like that into piles. Thank you. I appreciate it, but I was at the academy and they said... Would you like to learn press the digitation? I said, yes, that sounds great. And they said, oh, portals. And I said, oh, portals. I'm sure you could like make a portal to like some place where they wash dishes and put your dishes in on one end and then they wash them and you just take them out on the other end. How do you think I get my clothes clean? He pops Similar his collar. Hmm. You could buy a scroll um, for a few gold to learn the spell. Get out. <laughs> I, 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 Perhaps I will. I've just been lackadaisical and had no need for it, but better catch up with your friends. It's been a pleasure. I, I will let the lady know about your complaint. And I did like I did like the soup. Thank you. Are these common potions of healing? Mm-hmm. Okay. And she's just gonna awkwardly leave after a bow. Yes. 
So as you all quit, uh, we'll cut to Kyogen and Karis who take the stairs. Again, a very similar path of spiraling that curls up around the interior of the living quarters, which you believe to have been the goblins. And as you get to the top, you are met with the gentle glow of a roaring fire elemental standing in front of three kind of purple swirled framed portals. Before we like go into the room, uh, I would like to turn to Chico Kyogen. I can't say words right now. Um, hey, I know I, words are very difficult. I, we both struggle with it sometimes. It's so hard. We haven't gotten a chance to speak really since we got separated back before we saw the last. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, it was strange as I have no memory of what happened. I was, it was like a long sleep and then I awoke. But, but you went dark, Kyogen. I know that upsets you. You I, don't seem to I, be. I, I try as best I can to avoid it. The last time it happened, as you know, was when I found my family. I, I know, that's why I was so surprised that you would. I'm, I'm concerned, quite frankly. But when I awoke, it was just that evil woman and you were nowhere to be found and I just immediately I feared for you. And it was just sort of a natural reaction. Well, we're back together now. And I'm sure that after we speak to this pool, we will all be able to have a good rest. And I promise I will do everything in my power to prevent us from being separated again. Yes? Good. You know how I worry. I know. It's very, very kind of you. It means a lot to me. I worry for you too. You remind me of my little sister. I know. And with that, he sort of turns away, but as he turns away, you see like this one small tear sort of run uh, down his cheek. Uh, as one manly tear. And, and he, he just sort of sort of focuses on the task at hand as he sees the room before them with the, the glow of the flame. Do we wait or do we go? Uh, Garnet's going to come running up. We should, you should wait. By, yeah, by that time, clear. everybody gets up there. Yeah. Okay, guys, I have a plan for this. What? Oh boy, I would love to hear it. I'm going to cast Let's... detect thoughts. Oh, that's a good plan. Brilliant. I have no idea what that does, but it sounds useful. It lets me detect thoughts. Hence the name. Yep. Don't cast that... it on him. I don't know if he'll find very much. Uh, I can just scan any and all thoughts I want. You know what? In Kyogen's defense, out of character, <laughs> he has like commoner kind of intelligence. So, yeah, he's not a, a moron, so to speak. I'm just, I'm sorry. He just, bl- I'm sorry. It was a bad joke. He'll, he'll blip on the thought Go- radar. Gorbrin <laughs> just, just grumbles to her, just like, you're not being very nice. Sorry. Anyway, let's go meet Cool. Yeah. He sounds cool. Sounds like a heat miser. He may be over 101. I take so, out a penny yeah. and cast detect thoughts and fly in ahead. <laughs> Love it. A penny for your thoughts. Right? Just going. <laughs> God uh, So uh, as, as you've Fly in. That that's the, the material f- component, isn't it? Yeah. 
Copper piece. Yeah. Uh, oh my the, god! I just realized that after so many years of playing this <laughs> edition. I, I love Jeremy. Jeremy Crawford, if you're out there watching, I love you, man. God <laughs> damn it, Jeremy. Brilliant. That um, is my favorite material component. <laughs> um, when you walk in and you cast Detect Thoughts and Pay Your Penny, um, you the the entity known as cool the uh fire elemental turns and it's vaguely humanoid um it doesn't seem to be producing as much heat as fire of this proximity and blaze and intensity should um and as it turns you get various almost primal thoughts that come through your mind you know um a lot of it is just like, oh, I'm really hot, you know, and but that's it's not really helping you out too much here. Um, cool turns towards you all. And as soon as you all break the threshold of the room and you're all standing off the staircase and in this room proper, he asks his question. Through this portal, others went. Give me two of their names. I want to get enough of them. Surface thoughts wise. You don't think he knows? You, you still get, I'm really hot. But uh, you, get, you get a lot of like very stoic, almost like razor keen. If there was a starting block around, he'd be fitting his fiery feet into it, waiting for a pistol, as if if they get this wrong, I have something I'm commanded to do. So you have that kind of anticipation. Garnet's gonna gonna step forward and say, Tally and Brother Aurelius. You may pass. And Cool steps up steps by. So Mr. Cool, were you imprisoned here? Perhaps cursed? This is my job. You're not going to do oh, calling. Sorry. You're not going to do anything bad with those names, are you? You see Kyogen sort of reaching into his pouch and he takes out this little white squishy thing and he's putting it on a stick. <laughs> no, you cannot roast marshmallows on the fire elemental. Oh. Which one did they go through? You see a fiery appendage gesture towards the middle portal. Okay. Well, if the portals all switch around, then we... Yeah, so we jump. don't go through that one. Yes. Did we get the impression from what our dear Gabo friend said to us that they switch in a pattern or if it was random? Um, from what you were able to ascertain from uh, your host is when they switch, it's not the same one as it was before. So one, two, three would yeah. be two, you know, two, three, one. So they won't be the same portal regardless of the the, the, the number that they have. It's always going to switch okay. up. So there is a pattern to it because yeah. there's only so, so many it can do. But you mm -hmm. don't know what that base pattern is, though. So mm -hmm. the same one might take us to a different place ahead of them or behind yeah wait did the hags go through after them oh yeah which one did the hags go through before okay that doesn't help um they were the last to go through and he points again at the middle. They went through this one. How many were there? Twelve. That is a lot. Were you able to identify the races? Roll me an insight check with a hellacious DC. Wow, that is 
Does she have advantage because she's detecting thoughts? Not with... This is a poker read right here. Use an advantage if you have one. Okay, I'll use advantage. If that's what you all want, I will use an advantage. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just... Do it. Dirty 20. With a dirty 20, though you cannot see what would look like eyes, perhaps it is the detect thought spell that makes you think cool is looking at Garnet. Aladrin? No answer. Okay. So no, no hags, no shatter, Kai. I'm good to go. Let's go. Which one do you want to go, left or right? Before we go, Garnet, you said a name. Yeah, can we talk about it later? No, we need to talk about this. No, now. we can we talk need... about it while no. there isn't a fire. It's we're the portal's going to take us to a safe place. That's what. You guessed it said, okay? They could be waiting here, right? cool. beyond the portals. Cool, Look, we're safe here, right? Can we just but not remember, talk about we it? Remember, we don't go to the place where they went. We go If we go through uh, the same portal, we come out in a different place. We need to know what we are up against. It's fine, okay? That's what? fine. Brother Aurelius is a cleric of Corellian, okay? All right. And how do you know him? We're from the same town. Does anyone else know anyone? I wish I did. Diarna, who are these hags? They're hags. You don't want to run into hags. Okay. Look, people are allowed to have secrets, Gorbrin. I don't know every hag. What do you think I am? Don't worry about me, Gorbrin. Everybody I know is dead. At least you're upfront about it. If it's a pro, if it becomes a problem, I'll tell you, but it's not a problem right now, okay? You didn't tell us about your sister at first, so... I told you. You haven't told me anything. It's not important, boss. If it becomes important, I'll tell you. Karis, we should go through the same portal they went through. No, that won't take us to the right place. Aren't we supposed to be getting ahead? We don't know where it's going to... I don't care about getting ahead. I just want to find these people, okay? I don't care if we're ahead of them or behind them. We can catch up. There's 12 of them. There's not as many of us. Only they didn't switch. Yeah, that was... Left or right? Right seems right. As we're looking at these portals, can I deduce anything about their nature? Anything that would indicate, like, what sort of pattern they have? Could I look at them with my arcane, my eldritch sight, and maybe figure out which one might be stronger and maybe send us furthest? Uh, I will tell you this so you guys don't accidentally spend some advantage. It's impossible to figure out. And Dierna, when you look at these, they all appear to be the same type of enchantment, um, but they all hold that static movement as if they have been affected by whatever's going on with the weave. Hmm. I'm going to take a copper nib from my bag and hold up one of the coins and toss it through one of the portals. You hear it drop on the floor behind. Kick, 
you actually see it roll from behind the frame. You don't want to like start throwing th- things through there. They might, you might cause them to switch around. And where will we be then? I we'll think if same- we, we still don't know. <laughs> I we think if we more. go left, we're going to be left someplace we don't want to be. Right is right. Do you, you all seem to have this in hand. Do you figure it out? I'm going to go think. And he's going to move towards the door and pull out the sheet of paper. So Stare I will ask it. the group, left or right, if those are the two you've decided upon. Kara's go right. Yeah. right. Yeah. I'm... Make a decision and go. Yeah, let's let's just go, okay? Um, if if Kyogen wants Kyra's to go heads, right... Yeah. Yeah, Kyogen heads to the right portal. Yeah, I'll go with. Okay, so as Barbara, you are... are we leaving you behind? We all have to hold hands as we go through to make sure it doesn't switch and split us up. Boss, come on. I make sure I'm in the front so the only hand that I touch is Karas. We don't need to hold hands. We, mm-hmm. yeah, we do all need to go. go. Yeah, that's true. We all need to go to, through together. I hold Garnet's hand. I hold Garnet's other hand. <laughs> Hands that across means... Frey Runica. All right, right. baby. Gorbrin will hold Kyogen's hand. No. Kyogen's at the front. You're at the very buddies. end. You're at the very you, end, so you're the only one to touch Karas. Thank you. You got to you got to hold Darren Hall's hand. Okay. He just settles up. Can you uh, Kyogen steps in. Just just hold my hand. That's Dierna. what I'm doing. Why That's... would I do anything else? <laughs> What do you think uh, I'm gonna do? To you? Kyogen's in. He's he's very perturbed at this point. I'm pulled Hel- through, which pulls Garnet through. We're being pulled through. Yeah, yeah I guess we're just. Getting strong. You guys <laughs> all get sucked into this thing. We were like, right. You're, just saying right. We were right. You're, you're you're in the right portal. You're going through the right portal, and you guys get sucked through, and you look like you're on a preschool field trip as you guys all get pulled ah. through by your hands. And as you get sucked in, you pop out into a room. There's a slight moment of disorientation as almost on the surface world, it would be as if you had gone from a high elevation to a low elevation and your ears pop a bit. Um, It's an odd sensation because you doesn't seem like you're any different. The, the, The area around you has changed. You are in a rough, hewn what looks to be a natural cavern and just as you pop out you realize that there are no exits from this room and when you look you see that there would have been what possibly could have been a way out but it seems to have collapsed and just as you walk in and you guys kind of all stumble in onto the stone floor casting tremors through the stone There is a shake along the wall as a creature bursts forward with mandibles outstretched, this massive beetle creature. And I will need you all to roll me some initiative as we see what's going on. Look at those scores, Lord Almighty. Kyoga gonna lay the lumber. Yeah, you all are. So let's see, we've got Kyogen, Karas, who let's see, initiative uh, uh between Karas and Gorbrin, decide who you want to go first. You guys are both split with the same modifier. And then, uh, let's see. Got Garnet, then Dierna Hall. Okay, so as you go forward towards this creature, what would you like to do, Kyogen, as you are the first to react as you all hit? And this creature turns, and as it does, you get the hint of these kind of multifaceted eyes on the top of this thing's head. And for a moment, you begin to feel 
an odd sensation creep through you. Okay, so immediately I feel the sense of dread um, as I see sort of Kara sort of you know shaking the cobwebs out of her head as she adjusts to the the place, and I and I'm just like. I am taken over by the the sort of feeling of oh my god, she's going to be caught off guard, um, and I see this thing coming at us, and I pop my necrotic shroud. So once per long rest as an action, um, I basically exude this sort of black uh, aura about me with these sort of tendrils reaching out and grasping towards anything within 10 feet of me. Um, and I need the creature, whatever it is, to make a charisma saving throw. 17. Well, I move I move to where to, wherever it is. Okay. 17. Wow, 17. 17. That is a charismatic thing. Sure All is. Right. Uh, so bonus action. Uh, I move myself to melee. And bonus action, I'm going to rage. Okay. Uh, is Does your necrotic shroud count as your action then? Yes, the necrotic shroud is an action for me to do. Okay, and Kyogen, you are enraged. And you're in melee, enraged. Necrotic Shroud, Karis. Or, I'm sorry, Gorbrin was uh, elected to go first, right? Yeah. Okay, Gorbrin, what would you like to do? Gorbrin uh, is going to cast Bless at second lo level. Uh, seeing the cre creature, he's going to whisper and he's going to give um, Karis, um, Garnet, Dierna, and Kyogen um, blasts. So add a d4 to um, whenever you make an attack roll or a saving throw. So. You have been blessed. And, Anything and he's, else? You long time. And he's gonna stay. He's gonna keep. Um, he's gonna keep Charis and Dierna within ten feet of him, so they get his or his aura of his protection. So he gets in. Um, in front of them and whips out a shield. The bless is a d4? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so as no one has made a direct attack on this creature yet, um, other than the necrotic shroud, uh, I will not ask if you are looking at it directly, and I will assume that you are engaged in other activities that don't require staring at this thing. But we will go now to Karis. Karis, what would you like to do? So this thing has eyeballs, right? It, it, they seem seductive. They seem, these multifaceted eyes seem to want you to look directly at them. They are fascinating. Okay. That's gross, first of all. Um, and secondly, I would like to cast blindness on it. Um, so I would like a constitution save of 16, please. Well, don't hit 16, but like, you know. Sixteen. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to uh, allow Garbrandt to be my meat shield. Thanks, friend. Okie dokie. And we drop to Garnet. What would the rogue like to do here? I mean, nobody stabbed the thing, so I'm going to go uh, stab the thing. Um, you're in melee with it, right? Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, right. I will um, ask you this. Sneak attack. I will ask you this. As you are going in to attack, yeah. you may either look at the creature while you attack and attack normally, or you may avert your gaze, but that would make it a disadvantage when your attack roll. Um. Hmm. Uh, I will do it normally. 
let's 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 do some fun dangerous stuff sure uh let's roll a <laughs> charisma check as you go in okay uh is this charm magic uh it is an innate power so no it is not magic but will i be charmed no okay Oh no! Can I use an advantage belatedly? Not this time. But okay, I will let you fine. roll a d I will let you roll a d8. Okay. Um oh, but I have a d4 cuz my saving throw. So it's I mean, whatever. Let's just it, do it for it, fun. It it's a 7. Sure. You know what? I just wanted It's, to it's not better have than it. a nat 1. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm rolling a d8. Okay. Mm -hmm. 6. Okay, um, what is your movement speed? Uh, it's 30. Okay, um, roll me a, a d4. Okay. You all see as Garnet just sprints past this creature, runs full on until she reaches the, the where the uh, cave-in had been and just comes to a stop. And so I don't get my attack. You're you have no clue where you are. You're feeling nauseous. You feel completely disoriented. You don't know if it's an after effect of coming through the portal or what it is, but you have no idea how you even got in this current position. You are okay. confused. Okay. So we will drop to Deer in a Hall. What would you like to do? I want to throw a chaos bolt at it. You're going to look at it when you do it. Uh, I am, but from <laughs> as far away from it as I can be. What's your range for a Chaos Bolt? 120 feet. That's a hell of a range. Um, I'm going to say for you to get where you think a danger, actually, how far away? You've got a 40 foot kind of area to work with here. Um, do you want to be at the extreme edge of all of this, or are you trying to negotiate something? I'm going to be more towards the extreme edge of all of this because it looks like it could hit me good. <laughs> okay. So when you get to the extreme edge, uh, go ahead and roll your attack. As you feel a quiver of uncertainty, nausea, homesickness kind of go through you as you get a glint of these eyes, but... It seems to be just out of its effect range. Yeah, I don't like this thing. Uh, heck, heck, I'll use an advantage. I'll use an advantage, because why not? 17 to hit. Does not hit. What? What? So as the chaos bolt goes Roll through... the d4. Oh, yeah, the d4. You got bless. Oh. Roll the no, no, you blessed Kyogen, Karis, and Garnet. Yeah, wow. and it was at second l level. He so did say Dear Hall. Hall. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Oh, I yes, he know. did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Okay, I thought I, I'd only heard those three. I apologize. 19. That Total. does hit. With the Paladin's Bless, it switches a failure to a su success and you are able to connect as for a moment the bolts seem to ripple across this insectoid shell but then they reach purchase good bella. okay so that is um let's say we got acid or force let's go with acid so 10 acid damage it seems to hold its full strength as it burns in and you see some of this normally very glossy and almost polished surface pit and rise a bit as it smears with the acid damage. Um, the creature is not, it doesn't wince in pain or howl or anything like that, but you can see a visible effect as your bolt strikes home. And it is its turn as it is locked up with Kyogen, it is going to go ahead and let's see. One. Twelve's not gonna hit you, is it? Ten's not gonna hit you. 
What, 16 hit you? No, all three of them now? Okay. So as these two claws swing in and then the great mandibles pinch at the Asimar, you see Kyogen as he dodges and weaves out of the way. And it's back at the top of the turn, Kyogen. It tried what it had. What would you like to do? And are you looking at this creature? Okay, so I am going to look. Rage would neg negate it down to a regular roll, but I'm going to use an advantage to attack. That work right? Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't use advantage so, so to offset rage, disadvantage, rage, but rage, I will let you. Rage, rage gives me advantage. Right, right, this... right. And that would negate. That would negate the. You can't. We we can't play the advantage advantage game. But I will let you. I know what you're doing. You can take it to a normal attack. It would be. A, okay. You're not looking at it. And instead of being a disadvantage, you have the advantage from being enraged, so you can have a normal so, attack for it. So its ability to give me disadvantage doesn't take me down to normal roll? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Whatever, however you want to look at it. Disadvantage and then your attack up to advantage or your advantage or disadvantage so up to normal yeah, so or rage advantage down to normal. Advantage, and then its ability takes me down to a normal roll, but can I use a uh, audience supplied advantage to take it back to advantage? No, no. Once uh, my house rule is once an advantage and disadvantage are in play, they can negate, but you can't add additional gotcha. ones, right? Okay. All right. So a normal rule. Cross fingers, everybody. Hold your breath. <laughs> a twenty-two is a hit. All right. I'm gonna roll damage with my dice because the aforementioned great weapon master. Uh, Rerolling one. Okay. So that is four plus six uh so that's 13 plus the six from the charisma damage from necrotic shroud uh that's 19 bludgeoning damage as i bring it uh, my maul across its jaw you hear an audible crack as this insectoid jaw crack uh gives a bit beneath your blow and you see some type of kind of like a fleshy beetle type of thing beneath it all right second attack uh as i i bring across his jaw i lift them all back up and just come down right onto its forehead 17 okay um 17 does not hit d4 but, but oh yeah, it's yeah gonna, d4 it's gonna say you have to bless so uh so Uh, what's the command for it? I don't know. Go ahead and roll for me, Greg. It's... I trust you. Uh, well, all, you need need to, all you need is a one to hit. So uh, AC 18. So you're definitely going to hit. Uh, oh, go okay. ahead and Sweet. Yeah, roll me some more damage. All right. Uh, that is... That's another 12 damage. Thank you, uh, good paladin. You're welcome. This is why we take bless. You're absolutely right. Um, okay, so as if Kyogen, if you have anything else left to do, do it now or forever hold your peace as we are going uh, to the aforementioned Paladin uh, with Karas on deck. Yep. Gorbin, you're okay. up. Karas on deck. Yep. Do I know what kind of creature this is? You can roll me a history check. Okay. Roll history. It looks like a looks like a great big bug. Mm. This the one to hit it. They might we we might just be in its territory. Um, he's going to. He's not gonna. He's he's gonna use a help action for Charis for his uh his action action um so on her next thing she has advantage um he's going to keep himself between her and the bug and he's going to cast sanctuary on deer in hall very good so sanctuary so. is up and mm -hmm. uh that would be a wisdom save to even initiate an attack on deer in hall should that mm -hmm. 
come into play. So I will mm -hmm. put that up that she's got sanctuary. And Karis, you are up. If Gorbrin's done, Garnet on deck. So I don't, I'm so sorry, Gorbrin, but there's not really anything I can do that would benefit from your advantage right now. Um, maybe? I don't, no, I don't. I'm so sorry. Um, so how far is it away from me if I am currently behind Gorbrin and my meat shield? Uh, we'll say that you're within 10 feet. Excellent. I would like to peek out behind his shiny armor and I would like to hiss very meanly at it and cast poison spray. Please, that's another con save. Please don't roll a well. 12. Ha 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 ha. Excellent. It takes eight poison damage. And then as I am sneaking back around behind Gorbrin, I will shout over to Garnet. Snap out of it. We need you in the fight. Please, thank you. And thus give you a D of Bardic Inspiration. Less and inspiration? That's crazy. It's a cocktail of sorts. Um, so as we leave cars and we go to Garnet, Garnet, you are able to clear your head of this confusion now that you are out of the gaze of this creature. You are roughly 30 feet away from it. What would you like to do as you are standing in front of this collapse? But I would like you to roll a perception check for me, please. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration. Tell me yeah. everything. Okay, so on the subatomic level, no. As you're looking right in front of this collapse, you see that there is a way through it. Almost like a Narnian way through a wardrobe. You see that if even if Kyogen and Gorbrin, the two largest of your crew, were to negotiate this, you would be able to get through, dip, and weave, and it looks as if someone's passed through this cave-in before. From a distance, it looked sealed. Now that you're up against it, and with that incredible roll and the inspiration, you see the path. And not only that, you see the path that you've been following from back before you teleported. Um, oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say, I, I found where they went. Maybe we should just go this way and not fight the giant bug. Um, and then I will hold my action until, um, somebody tells me yes or no. Um, <laughs> And, and the trigger is, if it's a no, uh, then I will attack the monster. <laughs> okay. And how are you planning to attack from this range? From like a ranged attack or? This range. Oh, I, yeah. I don't have. Um, oh, I have a, yeah, I have a dagger. I'll throw like a, throw a dagger. That works for me. So, um. Yeah, as you ready the dagger, we're not going to worry about range or anything with thrown weapons. You got it. Um, so we cut down to Deirna Hall, even from your kind of opposite end of the room, as Hemelig's on your shoulder, kind of riding a little bit back on the broom, waiting to see what you want to do. You hear uh, Garnet's cry of, do we stay or do we go? And you're the first to be able to issue a response to that do you do so um i think i'm gonna float closer to the thing keeping my gaze down as i go and i want to use awakened mind to project into its mind as i also speak aloud so it'll understand me and i say surrender and leave us be or else you'll be destroyed and i want to intimidate it i'm doing an intimidate 
being a scary girl. I don't want to use an advantage. <laughs> Roll okay. that intimidation. Absolutely, sure. It's got enough of an intelligence to be intimidated. 22. Ooh. It might just be the mall talking that cracked the shit out of its face and the acid spray and the bolt that makes this creature think this is not this is not its day to either die or fight and everyone that is engaged this would both be Gorbrin and Kyogen uh Karis you're 10 feet back um uh everybody else is kind of back enough out of the way you two can get attacks of opportunity should you choose to take them but it seems that whatever Deirna Hall just did as she flew over spell or by hook or by crook this creature doesn't want to be here anymore i was speaking out loud as i was projecting to its mind okay so, it would, so then you heard it directly yeah. yeah yeah and i'll shout out kyogen don't it's li- wait or not okay so yeah kyogen you'd hit as it moves away yeah, Kyogun's totally raged. He clearly does not give two wet shits what you say. So yeah, he 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 tries to hit it again. I assume he hits. Yeah, that hits. Um, I will ask one more thing before we leave. Deirna Hall, what do you tell? Do you say anything to Garnet? Stay or go, and you're flying towards her. I assume as you flew over and issued this command. Yeah. If Kyogun attacks, then I'll say to attack but I have a question I don't know I don't know since since I have a reaction and I have warcaster mm-hmm. um wait no this would all, would only work if it was the creature cuz I wanted to try command to have Kyogen drop his maul before his attack hit but it's that's not going to work yeah, he he swings his reactionary attack and does in fact hit. Uh, roll me some damage, or if you've already done so, what is it? Uh, total damage comes to eighteen. Okay, so again, another crack, uh, another kind of separation of plates, as this creature is, you know, it's insectoid and it's shell is compromised at this point um if there was any doubt it needed to not be here it has decided to not be here however um as you attack it does turn back and look at you with its eyes and for whatever hooker by crook uh it's now backing away looking at the group in front of it um keeping a literal eye on you all as it's moving back towards the tunnel that it made to get in here. Um, Corporal wants to try to call out to the beast and just like do like a non-threatening posture. Just bring up a hand to it. Like Jurassic Um, World with the raptors? Yeah, yeah. Just like... You're gonna Chris Pratt it? (laughs) Alright. Yeah. He's gonna try. Like he, he wants to try to calm it. He wants to see if he can get clo- close enough to cast Cure Wounds on it. This is new. Uh, all right, uh, roll me a persuasion check, as this is almost like a horse whisperer type of moment. Um, it's the Chris Pratt. It's the, you know, calm down, Blue. Uh, you're moving in to see if you can... This creature's hurt. It's intimidated. Um, uh, mm-hmm. there is an Asimar that's just kicking its Asimar, so it, it's... If that's the case, I'm going to use my Channel Divinity, Emissary of Peace. As I walk up to him, like, my armor starts to have this silver mist kind of wrinkle off of him. And he's just going to say, like, easy, easy, it's all right. You gave us a scare, and so he'll gain a plus five to his persuasion rolls for the next ten minutes. And 
You gave us a scare. That's that's good, man. That's really good. See, and so it's gonna be a one d twenty plus thirteen. So we'll see how this goes. Twenty two. The creature stops. It's still very intent upon this situation, but it you think it will allow you to touch it. And I will say at this point, as you're reaching out towards this creature, Garnet, you've seen this entire exchange. Now you've seen Gorbrin as he's attempting to Umber Hulk Whisperer here. You pretty much have your answer, if you glean it to be, that battle seems to have been stopped. What would you like to do as Gorbrin reaches out? Go through the tunnel. So Gorbrin, just as your fingers are about to touch the cracked hide of the Umber Hulk, Garnet, you slip through this area, your eyes on the ground, you figure and follow the trail that you have led the group through the entirety here of Underdark to this point. And as you're just intent upon this, making sure there isn't anything that could give away as, you know, you're, like I said, this is like a Narnian type of situation. You're moving and pressing through rocks and there's fallen timbers that are kind of reminiscent of like a mine shaft support system. And as you push through the last one, and you turn and face the area that you are in, you see a wide open grassy field. Oh no. You see an autumnal setting of oranges and golds, the smell of the season on the air, and there is a carnival in front of you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we will end this session of Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I knew it was right there. I knew it was right there through that cave. Uh, and I was so hoping it was going to be guarded to go through first. Oh, my friends. Let's go around. We went over a little bit. I know that uh, Critical Role's back tonight. So, um... Let's jump around to all of our friends, find out where you are online, where we can find you, and um, how you are doing so far in 2019. Let's jump in. Uh, Jason, we started with you last week, but we'll start with Kika this week. Kika, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, getting back into classes, but I'm not letting that slow me down because I'm still in way too many games. <laughs> Amen. So the best place to follow me is to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Kikavio, where you can get updates on what I'm in, because right now I'm in like eight games. So I'm not going to waste your time by listing them all out. But yeah, follow me on Twitter. There we go. Links in chat, everybody. Please, Kika doesn't want to waste your time by telling you uh, what game she's in, but please go to Twitter and find out because I've always said I'm blessed with very kind, very professional, very fun, very great our peers. Um, make sure you fill your day with kindness. It certainly helps out. And now let's drop down to Garnet, the rogue who is standing before an autumnal carnival. Lauren, how are you doing? Where can we find you? And how is 2019 treating you thus far? Uh, yeah, hey, um, I'm Lauren, I, um, I guess, I guess I'm, Garnet got back home or something terrible, so, um, that's gonna be awful and terrible, uh, good times. Um, <laughs> I am JL underscore nice girl on Twitter. Um, I do lots of things uh, in the kind of tabletop space. I have a blog. I have a podcast called Too Many RPGs, um, where we talk to creators and fans of actual play about the shows they love and why they love them. Um, we just released our first episode of 2019 on Tuesday. We talked to Dungeon Commander about uh, 
Flare, the Mutants in the Night actual play. It's an incredible interview. I had a great time with it, so you should definitely check it out. Um, I play on streams uh, almost every day of the week, so you can check my pinned tweet to see uh, where I am there. And I also just recently started a Discord server for um, uh, people, tabletop gamers of uh, who are on the asexual and aromantic spectrums. Um, it's a fun, cozy, safe place to talk about all of that stuff. Um, so if you want to uh, be a part of that, um, just uh, send me a message on Twitter and I will send you uh, a, an invite to the server. Um, it's a very good, warm, happy place and definitely the highlight of my 2019 so far. Fantastic. Uh, like I mentioned, everyone, kindness wins the day. And thus far in 2019, I am seeing so much of it. It is uh, heartwarming. So with that being said, let us go over to the paladin who again had to take uh, the appropriate amount of shit for two hours, but did so with a smile, which is the best. And a couple of funny ass comments in chat. Uh, my friend, how are you doing? Where can we find you online? And uh, how's 2019 treating you so far? I'm doing all right. 2019 has already been very interesting, but um, you can find me on twi twi Twitter and twitch.tv at Koros, um, RPG. I like to talk about D&D &D and the, the fantasy uh, genre. Uh, genre. Um, and you can find me on Sundays at the Soul Bear RPG Twitch channel, where I run a game called The Shattered Eye, which is my homebrew world for a sword and sorcery inspired D&D 5e show and the party is just about to to learn a little bit more about the Feywild and as well as are prepping to go fight the Manticore so it should, should be interesting awesome awesome uh, the capital T Manticore uh, sounds ominous and uh when you need ominous, thank you very much, Castle Mac, for the subscription, my friend. Um, and let's jump over to Blenny. Blenny, how are you doing? Where can we find you online? And how is 2019 treating you thus far? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Blinby, B-L-I-N-N-E-B-E-E. -E -E. Wow, spelling was hard for a second there. Um. I am going to be in the upcoming Uncaged Anthology. That's and be released on DMs Guild. So keep a lookout for release dates because we're going to be getting those soon because we are submitting all of our final drafts tonight. So that's coming up social promotion wise. Um, 2019 has been a mixed bag so far, but uh, you know, I, I have hopes that it'll get better. Fantastic, my friend, and I hope it does. And everybody, just as these players will give you kindness, make sure you follow them and extend the kindness so we can all create a cohesive community that relies on that emotion as its default state. That's my goal for 2019. It's unachievable, but by God, we can work towards it. Speaking about working towards something, Jason, how are you doing? And uh, it seems that your prey, you will not be able to raid or squash the Umber Hulk unless you go through Chris Pratt. But um, how are you doing? Where can we find you online? And how's 2019? Other than having yeah. bronchitis. Yeah, yeah. So start off the year uh, a little bit under the weather, but now doing well. Um, a bit disappointed that the first real combat that Kyogen gets involved in uh, gets negotiated away uh, via the the shiny human. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, you can find me on Twitter at JasonTDNDDM. Um, and also, uh, here in the next two weeks, expect a huge announcement for a massive D&D &D charity stream. I mean, D&D &D charity stream to end all D&D &D charity streams with the creme de la creme of D&D &D personalities. Uh, all to benefit an awesome charity uh, regarding teen suicide called Jasper's Game Day. Um, and there'll be amazing DMs, amazing players. Uh, just the, 
a sight to behold and and everybody is contributing time we've got all sorts of companies contributing various giveaways and all sorts of things that will be coming so just keep an eye out you'll see a huge publicity push here in the next two weeks so fantastic my friend uh, and like i said as soon as we find out we will put everything up here as often as we can as that is among many but a, a very worthy wild cause that needs help and support can't wait for it as for me grimjack21502 on the twitter tales from the grim on the twitch we have a rebranded channel we have a couple fun things coming along we have may black roses bloom on monday and wednesday night of the upcoming week and at the end of this month we have Highlander, if on a winter's night. So uh, please join us as, and we also have Lady Blackbird starting a week from Monday. Very fun things on the channel. Stop by whenever you would like. Support all the people that you see here and all their various ventures in the RPG community. Support our other channel. Castle Mac was just here. Make sure you go over and give them love whenever you can. And uh, until next time, and as the campfire back at our goblin hosts begins to go down as the campfire dies there's one thing left to say you can't always roll nat 20s but you can always role play we will see you later my friends <laughs>